Hi, my name is April Lambert. I'm a physical therapy student at Elon University, and today I'll be going over the use of TENS in the article, The Effects of Exercise with TENS on Spasticity, Balance, and Gait in Patients with Chronic Stroke, a Randomized Controlled Trial. The article is written by Jay Park, DCO, W. Choi, and S. Lee, and written in 2014. So the basis of the article was that they used 34 chronic stroke patients who were at least six months post and could independently ambulate 10 meters. Um, they used the TENS in combination with a therapeutic exercise program overseen by a physical therapist. And then they also had a placebo control group who only did the therapeutic exercise and were told that they were being that they were using a subsensory TENS without the device being turned on. Um, the study went for five the patients came for five times a week for a total of six weeks for a session of 30 minutes. Uh, during the session, the patients did 10 minutes of one-on-one -on -one range of motion with a therapist, 10 minutes of functional mat exercises, and then 10 minutes of gait exercises. Um, the group who was using the TENS unit mm -hmm. used two channels with five square centimeter pads located on the quadriceps and they were located on the calves, the gastroc, and then also medial and lateral quads. Um, the device was set at 100 hertz with a pulse width of 200 microseconds, and the amplitude in the article happened to be set at 0.01 milliamps. However, this was set at 90% subsensory threshold, so that was just kind of the parameters that they used. Um, like I said, the TENS unit group had the TENS on during the exercises, and the placebo group um, had a TENS device hooked up. However, they were told that they would, it would be subsensory, and then the device was never turned on. So overall, the outcome measures that they found with the um, research was that in the spasticity of the patients, the TENS group had an overall greater increase, or greater improvement in their spasticity. The TENS group also had um, overall improvement in their tug scores versus the placebo group, and the TENS group also had significant improvement between pre- and post-testing. Uh, the TENS group had significant improvement in their balance um, parameters, which included eyes open and closed, anterior, posterior, and medial lateral postural sway, as well as velocity movement, which was um, measured by the good balance device. The TENS group was also, um, there's also a significant difference between groups in those uh, parameters. Um, the TENS group also had significant improvement pre and post testing in certain gait parameters, which included uh, velocity, cadence, predic step length, and predic stride length. The placebo group did show significant improvement in velocity before and after treatment, but the gait group show or the um, TENS group showed more improvement in the gait parameters of cadence, predic step length, and predic stride length. So overall, with the show of these improvements, um, I would say that the improvement in the spasticity scores would allow the patient to become more functional, and they would have less interference with their loco locomotive economy. The improvements in their gait would then allow the patients to improve their balance with the ambulation. And then the tug scores also, show, also showed um, an improvement in the functional parameters that would allow patients to get around the community. So overall, um, I would say that this study would be useful to use in the clinic because there is no show of adverse side effects to subsensory threshold tens and um, the patients all had significant outcomes in gait, balance, and spasticity. Thank you.